welcome back to another cheapo multimeter review. Today in the spotlight, Canadians know the name Mastercraft. Yes, Canadian Tire Specials. Well, we're looking at a Mastercraft multimeter today, but don't despair, this multimeter is available globally. That's because the meter is actually made by Allsun. Yes, this meter is also classified as an Allsun. EB382B and like I said it is available on eBay um, other online e-tailers so it is not strictly available with Canadian Tire and once again the OEM is all sun so basically Canadian Tire in this case has just rebranded the meter um, and nothing more but because being in Canada a lot of Canadians still do a lot of their shopping at this chain um, and it is quite popular the Mastercraft uh, line of meters so without further ado let's take a look at the meter itself this is a no frills non auto ranging dim and it has a max of 300 volts AC DC it does current um, only on the DC side has a battery load tester does 1.5 9 volt and 12 volts it does resistance, but only to a measly 2000K. It does continuity and diode, and of course, voltage AC-DC to 300 volts. It has no backlight. The hold is the standard touch hold. Nothing to get excited about. The milliamp shares the same input jack as the voltage. Um, but that being said, as you can tell on this particular meter, it has the ETL logo, Intertech. So that should mean that we are in store for some half decent input protection, which we will verify shortly. The rotary switch actually has a pretty nice feel. It's got that clackety clack and it does not get stuck in between ranges. Um, I like it. Um, what else do I like? I like the fact that the font they've used on the um, display itself is very easy on the eyes um, you're not going to have any issues seeing this uh, display speaking of displays yeah look at that nice big crisp LCDs no backlight but very nice display visually um, the liquid crystal display technology here um, is really shining so uh, yeah I like it the meter does not have any other bells and whistles. There is no NCV or live line or anything else. It is strictly your basic multimeter. Now they call this one the 052-0060-2. As I mentioned in previous reviews of Motomaster, I'm sorry, Mastercraft meters, that um, yeah, the naming schema I find awkward, um, specifically because you can have two completely different meters that have the same numeric naming scheme. So that just messes things up, at least I think. Mileage may vary, but that's the way I see it. Something else worth pointing out is the fact that the default probes that ship with the meter um, are covered, so you have a very limited, um, I'd say limited use really. Um, it's hard to stick these in a socket. Even continuity testing is a bit of a pain. Um, so yeah, to uh, increase safety, they have kept those caps on the tips. So just something to take note of. Other than that, the leads themselves are kind of on the cheapy side. Um, really nothing to write home about. There actually is a gauge rating on the lead itself. And 22 AWG, Herwell, 1000 volts. AC 1200 volts DC so there you go interesting definitely not very soft or pliable though um, yeah the meter does not ship with a boot or a holster of any type so uh, if you tend to drop it um, I'm not sure how good this will be at withstanding uh, any major topple on the ground so no boot For the voltage comparison test, I've taken out another Mastercraft multimeter, the 
55-6. Um, I did a review on this one as well. It is also non-auto ranging. It does have a few more bells and whistles, but um, it's quite a price difference. This one is going for about $40 Canadian, around 35 US. Whereas this guy, if you can get it on sale, it's around 15 bucks Canadian. So yeah, quite a difference. Alrighty, so taking it up, starting at 0.5 volts. Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, what is that? Ah, Mr. Postman just came in. I got some more multimeters. Oh, it's going to be a great month for reviews. Okay, guys, here we go. Starting off at 0.5 volts. 2.2 volts now. 2.28 for the 55. 2.25. For the 60, the star of the show right here. Going up, up and away, sitting at 7.7 .7 volts, 7.79 .7 on the 55 and 7.72 for the 60. Let's take it up to a whopping 14.2 volts, 14.28, 14.18, about 10 counts difference going up, up and away. Let's hit 20 volts. And as you can see, we've hit the over range since they're both non-auto ranging. We have to increase up to the 200 volt marker. There we are. So sitting at 20 volts, 20.0 spot on for the 55, 19.7 for the 60. Let's go and max it out to 31.4 volts, 31.5 and 31.1 respectively. So in terms of accuracy, I would probably say that the 55 is a tad more accurate. Um, the 60s out just by a few counts, but still, um, nonetheless, they were uh, both just fine. Take note, there is no bar graph or scale on either meter. Um, that does come in handy every now and then, but once again, the 60 does not ship with a autograph. Now remember, you can get the exact same meter uh, online through uh, eBay, for instance. I will put a link uh, below this video. And it's around 10 bucks Canadian. It's around $7 US. Um, and that is the Alson, the original OEM manufacturer of this meter. So uh, a lot cheaper online. So let's see if we can light up these diodes, starting off with the red. Indeed we can, but there is no indicator of the forward voltage drop. Same with the yellow. Green is lit, although barely. The white is lit and the blue so it was able to light them all up however we did not get any sort of voltage indicator on the display the diode output voltage is just under three volts mastercraft has a whopping 2000k or around two mega ohm for the uh, maximum resistance or ohm setting we're sitting right now at uh, one mega ohm 1000k and as you can see it's pretty well spot on uh, let's bring it up a little bit here, 1.9, no worries there, 1.5, looks good, 500k, yeah, and let's see if we can hit 2 mega ohm spot on, 2000k, is it going to find it, yeah, there we go. So it's pretty close. It's right at the uh, fringe, so to speak. But um, yeah, so it's it's trying. So basically, if you do a lot of high uh, resistance uh, testing, anything over two mega ohm, you're definitely going to want a different meter. Next on the agenda is continuity. Here we go. These are the default probes. Now, once again, because of this um, sheathing they have on top. Doing continuity is going to be a little bit harder than normal. I wouldn't normally use these types of probes for continuity, but let's see what how they do. Wow. So extremely slow. Very low. Yeah, so definitely um, not so good in the continuity department. Let's try some uh, probe masters. See if it's any better. So really no difference whatsoever. So in this case, uh, obviously one of the best sets of probes you can get has no bearing on the continuity with this meter. It's just slow, painfully slow, um, very low, 
And yeah, why bother? If we look at the back, there is an Intertech ETL designation. So hopefully that means that this, sh this should have some half decent uh, input protection. So we'll take a look at that as well. Um, it does tell you that it takes one nine volt battery and there are two fuses. Now, one thing I do like again is if you do blow a, a fuse, it does say here on the back what type of fuse you need to replace it with. So there you go. Now it has your standard standing bail. Works um, nice and solid and does not flop around. Now, as we can see, first of all, on the back, it uh, is ABS plastic. There is no shielding. Just bring it around to the other side. You do have your threaded insert for the battery compartment, and there is two Phillips screws at the bottom and one at the top to remove the assembly. As you can see, it is strictly going into the plastic for the rest of the housing. Uh, the threaded insert is strictly for the battery. So it's quite interesting actually this uh, inexpensive aka cheap little multimeter has some pretty decent input protection. Um, we've got the two fuses. We have the uh, 250 milliamp fuse, uh, 300 volt. It's a fast fuse. I believe that's a 5 by 20 and the other 5 by 20 is the 10 amp 300 volt um, fast blow fuse as well. On the 10 amp range we have the fuse itself. We also have a uh, PTC and uh, looks like a uh, Varistor um, and another PTC. So a couple of PTCs, a Varistor and a fuse. That's pretty darn good input protection for a cheap multimeter. On the milliamp side of protection we have the fuse itself, the fast blow fuse and um, it looks like we have some precision resistors. Now, once again, the milliamp uh, shares the same uh, input as the voltage. There is no separate milliamp jack. Something else that's uh, kind of interesting is if we look at the piezo of the speaker, it's actually um, a super, super thin variety. It's actually embedded onto the PCB itself. But even though it's embedded, they're still look, uh, utilizing um, some of the track from the IC, which is soldered directly to the positive terminal of the uh, piezo. So that's uh, a little interesting. Um, what else do we have here? PCB itself is fairly small, um, but it is, as you can tell, a lot going on here. And if we look at it, so it's an EM382 clone, uh, Sun being the OEM in this case. But uh, once again, um, in terms of the overall input protection, it's very very impressive for such a cheap multimeter. Definitely uh, tons better than your standard 830 clone. Now the IC is cobbed. Here we have the uh, zebra strip. As you can tell, it's actually really long. Um, it extends farther than the actual PCB itself. Um, so yeah, definitely in this case you can tell they're uh, utilizing this PCB for more than one uh, meter. Okay, we're going to turn around and see what it looks like on the other side. The input jacks are of the split variety. Um, once again, they are in a pretty solid plastic housing. So in terms of the OR resistance, we don't see this being a problem in the long term. In terms of the soldering to the PCB from the input jacks themselves, it appears to be quite good. Taking a look on the other side, here are the tracks for the rotary selector switch. Um, appears to be sort of a, some sort of a gold plating. Um, what have you. Very clean. Um, the current shunt is actually fairly long um, for such a small meter, so that's always a good sign. And this is the um, uh, the hold button here. Here's the uh, zebra strip from the other side, as you can see. Um, nice big LCD display, um, but pretty well that is it. No other components on this side of the board. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about, about the actual size of that zebra strip. You've got uh, about a quarter of an inch um, left gap. So definitely this has been designed with other boards in mind. So here's a good overall view of the 
insides and the outside of that Mastercraft. Once again, we have some really decent input protection going on. We do have that varistor. We have two PTCs and the uh, main fuse on the current side of things. On the milliamp side of things, once again, we have another milliamp fuse and we have some precision resistors. Now I've removed the fuses out of each of the um, fuse holders just to give you a better look at the PCB itself. But very clean, um, no flux residue whatsoever. Very uh, nicely done. We have the fabrication date at the bottom, which is July 18th, 2018. So definitely a new revision board. And we also have the Sun logo, the All Sun logo. You can see it right at the top. So we have six uh, rotor switch contacts and uh, yeah, looks fine. Closing thoughts on the Mastercraft 0060 multimeter. I actually like it, believe it or not, in terms of all the Mastercraft meters I've tested, this is probably the first time I've actually thought this is not a bad meter for the price. Now, when I say price, I mean a sale price. If you do a lot of shopping at this chain store here in Canada, Canadian Tire, you definitely want to get these meters when they're on sale. If you can pick this up for 15, 20 bucks, it's a great deal. Otherwise, I'd say buy it online and you're gonna get the same meter just at a much better price doesn't do a heck of a lot. It's non auto ranging. It's not true RMS, but what it does, it does quite well. It's got a really good vibrant LCD display, even though it backs, lacks a backlight, it's still very nice. And we saw that input protection. I gotta say, wow, I was really impressed. If you see this meter, yeah, grab it. You can certainly do a lot worse and it's a great all around voltmeter. On a scale of five stars, I'm giving the Mastercraft a 0060. A solid 3.5. Hope you enjoyed this review, everybody. Until the next time, keep on testing.